Organize Me Radio, Episode 5, Mastering Meal Prep. I'm Naima Ford Goldson. Welcome to Organize Me Radio. I am here with my special guest, Carolyn Rogers. She is the owner of Neat Nerd Solutions. Welcome, Carolyn. Hi, glad to be here. All right, Carolyn. So tell us, how did you become a professional organizer? Um, It was kind of by accident. Um, I was helping a friend um, unpack from a move. And she's like, you know, they pay people to do this. I was like, what? They do? <laughs> what? Because it, 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 organizing like, is one of those things that I like to do, but never mm-hmm. really thought about it. Right. Um, been doing it forever. I got a thousand siblings. Mm. Grew up in a small house. Mm-hmm. And, Same. You know, my, exactly, right? <laughs> and my mother kept us in line like a drill sergeant. Mm-hmm. You know, we had tasks and everything. So there were certain things that, you know, when you have nine kids in a, basically a tiny three bedroom house right with a basement then you know if everybody's leaving stuff all over the place that that just don't work mm, story and, of my life girl <laughs> <laughs> and, and my mother in particular was not having it so like to some degree even through my messy periods i'm still a little bit organized like so and then it wasn't until i want to say 2015 when i was helping that friend out um that she brought it up and i was like oh there's a career there's there, there's something that can be done with this mm-hmm. like that's beneficial and you know i like to travel so i was like um because I'm, I'm a part-time organizer actually so full-time software engineer hence neat nerd solutions um and i was thinking that like i can offset my travel budget mm-hmm. but since then i was like no this is like it's really i don't treat it like a side gig if that makes any sense <laughs> because the way that organizers that we end up being so involved in people's lives depending on what we're doing for them right like you can't treat it like it's not serious business because it's serious to somebody exactly okay so we are actually going to talk about meal planning today because carolyn is the meal planning and prep extraordinaire (laughs) okay i'll take it (laughs) so carolyn okay tell us why did you start meal planning Okay, so I started meal planning, uh, again, something that happened by accident. Mm. Um, I think I was meal planning before I knew it was a thing. Like now it's a thing, meal planning, meal preparation, everything like that. It's a thing. Um, So I work, um, as far as engineering, I work in a completely different city than the one that I live in. So I would stay in that place during the week and just come home on the weekends. So trying to eat out every day didn't work out, and Mm. it wasn't always... A case where it was convenient for me to cook every day right so I decided that I was just gonna make a bunch of stuff to eat throughout the week and just pack it up and just eat it like in different meals and whatnot um, just to simplify things mm-hmm. and I've been doing that for probably definitely over a decade probably somewhere on the lines of like maybe 13 14 years That's a long time yeah yeah oh, yeah and 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 it wasn't anything that I particularly looked up at the time. I right. just started doing it and tweaked it over time right? Um, to make it work for me. So the way that I do it may not be the way that, you know, some meal prep or meal planning professionals may. I mean, if you've been doing it for 13 years, you are a meal planning professional. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And I feel like now it's just, you know, it's a craze to meal prep and meal plan. And I feel like people are just kind of learning as they go anyway, yeah. so... What better person to tell us all about it than hey. you? And, you know, I always say there's no rules to anything. If it works for you, then it works for you mm-hmm. and do it. You don't have to do it um, any specific way just because, you know, someone says so. You know, it's OK to take suggestions, but eventually figure out how to make something work for you. What are your tips to help someone start the process of meal planning and prep? <sighs> to start the process, I would say start thinking of the types of things that you like to eat and okay. or like like start thinking about your diet because mm. um, sometimes like I know at one point <laughs> I would make things that were so complicated 
and whatnot. It would take me a long time just because I'm experimenting or something like that. Mm. But start thinking about your diet. What type of things do you like to eat? What type of things do you need to eat? Right. You know, sometimes we have suggestions from those um, doctors and right. whatnot yeah. of what we should eat or, or if we have any type of goals. So start mm. thinking about what type of things you like to eat. Um, and then from there, you start kind of planning out what would be simple ways to make that happen. Okay. It's, 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 it's the, the, the main start is, what am I going to eat? Got it. So with that, how do you come up with the menu? For me now, um, <laughs> it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Like okay. there are some times when I might have menus planned out like, okay. Like, for example, next month in January, um, I'm going to do a fast. Okay. So I'm basically going to be like practically vegan for a month. Got it. So since I know that, you know, I'm trying not to eat the same things over and over and over again because there are some go-tos that I have. So um, I'm starting to plan that menu out for the whole month. Like, okay, this week I know I'm going to eat some of this and some of that and that week. And just basically so that I know that I won't be, so I won't feel like I'm being tortured by the time I get about halfway through. So how many different meals do you prep for the week? Because I know there are a lot of people who attempt to do meal planning and prep. And even when you look on things like Pinterest and you see like meal planning and it looks like the same meal for every day of the week. And I don't know (laughs) what person in their right mind can eat the same thing every (laughs) single day. Yeah. So typically I, I think that most things like you might be able to get away with it for like maybe two, three days in a row. Um, and then after, after that, you're kind of tired of it. So what I started doing is, um, I would make, uh, like one dish, uh, like a larger dish, like a, a pot of something like mm-hmm. a pot of spaghetti or chili or something like that, or a casserole or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and even some things that will keep, like, say you can put it in a freezer. Like if you're just cooking just for yourself, that you can expand it out over a longer period of time. Some mm. things that, things that freeze well. Um, and then I'll do, um, what I always call like a mix and match type thing where I'll make a couple of different types of meat okay. and a lot of different sides mm. so that I can pair them in different ways so that technically, yeah, I'm eating the same thing all week, but it's not in the same combinations. So it's kind of, kind of feels a little bit different. Mm. So. so then, so generally, how long does it take with the prep, grocery shopping, all mm. of that? Hmm. That depends on what I'm trying to make. Okay. And how I feel. Mm-hmm. Like I'm willing, I'm willing to, to hash out a good four hours, <laughs> four or five hours. Um, if I'm, if I've got a taste for something. Gotcha. Like, and there are some things that take longer to make than others, but typically on average, I probably spend, including the grocery shopping, um, and that's not necessarily all done in the same day. Keep that in mind. Mm. Um, But if I were to do it all in one day, like I'm going to do today, (laughs) then I would say it's probably going to take me a bit between three and four hours. Okay. I don't think that's bad. That's not bad, especially since you save like so much time during the week with cooking. That's three and four hours that I don't have to cook. Right. Spread out during the week. Because if you think about it on average, you know, depending on what you make, if you had to cook something every day, on average, if you look at any recipe, a meal is going to take 30 to 40 minutes. Right. Or and even, sometimes more. And sometimes longer. Yeah. You know, if you have something that yeah. needs to go in the oven, right. then yeah, it's going to be a lot longer. Um, so I would say I, I probably end up taking about three to four hours. Okay. And and part of that is also because I figured out a system of like when to prepare certain things and how to prepare certain things. Like, mm. like I can chop things. Like if I chop things ahead of time and it's just a matter of me putting things together, then that shortens some of the time. Mm -hmm. Or if there are some things that I know that need to go into the oven that I don't have to tend to constantly, then I can prepare those things first and let it be in the oven while I'm putting together some of the other things that do require more attention. So what are some of the staples needed with meal planning? Are there staples? No, I, 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 I think that the staples vary depending on your diet. Like say, for example... Um, I find that I use, I, I cook with a lot of lentils. I like lentils. Okay. So it's not a big deal for me to go and get like a huge supply of lentils because mm-hmm. I know eventually I'm going to make my way through them. Um, seasonings, like some of your go-to seasonings, mm-hmm. things like that to keep in hand because you're going to, con- you're going to use them constantly. Rice, 
those are the main things for me that tend to be staples for me. If you are someone who, um, like you have, especially if you have like the freezer space or things like that, then you can buy some of the meats that you know and the fish and things like that, that you know that you're going to eat, you know, that are common things for you to prepare in different ways. Like, yeah. like you can find like large packages of chicken breasts, you know, okay. if you know that you're going to do that. So it's just a matter of pulling it out of the freezer and thawing it out. Um, I personally prefer fresh vegetables. So that's not something that I buy to keep around as a staple, mm-hmm. unless it's something like I might buy a bunch of onions because onions will last, a f- you know, a few weeks at a time. So, gotcha. so it, the staples depends on your diet. Okay. Um, and, and that's something that you'll kind of notice that, hey, I'm buying this a lot. Mm-hmm. And then realizing that, okay, I'm buying this a lot, but it's something that's, that lasts a long time. So it might be worthwhile to buy the 50 pound bag of rice if you know that you have a lot of rice. In right. Your if diet. you're going to use it. Exactly. As long as it doesn't expire. As long as it doesn't expire. Exactly. <laughs> Pay attention to expiration dates. Pay right. attention to expiration. There's no need to try to be healthy and you're not eating stuff that's, you know, in its prime. Exactly. Okay, so do you have any favorite recipes, any of your go-to recipes? Uh, yes. Yes, indeed. My go-tos, like I said, lentils are like one of my go-to things because they're filling. They're, you know, they're really good for you. They're filling. They have a lot of good fiber. They have yeah, protein. Yeah, I can smell them right now. <laughs> right? And, and, and they're one of those things that, you know, you can, you know, you season them. You change the seasoning a little bit and it's like a whole different, <laughs> different mm-hmm. meal. So I cook a lot of things with lentils. So I have like a lentil soup that I make and I figured out how to make that lentil soup like in two or three different ways. Mm. So like one way I'll make it like say um, next month when I'm on my fast, when I'm not having any meat, I'll use sweet potatoes instead of chicken. Ooh, that sounds so good. And sometimes when I'm, when I'm not on my fast, I use sweet potatoes and chicken. Okay. So, <laughs> so it's like, that's one of my go-tos. Um, I have this vegetable soup that I make with coconut milk that, ended up being that was actually a recipe that I made up that um, sounds so good I feel like you need to post these recipes <laughs> hey I might have to do that for a small fee no. <laughs> right um so a lot of times those are things that are fairly healthy mm-hmm. um when I'm like okay I don't know what I feel like making this week uh, I'm just gonna make some vegetable soup because mm-hmm. uh, I know I like it and or the lentils I know I can change it around um other go-to's are it's easy to bake a chicken like you can change how you bake a chicken or grill it you know who doesn't have a george foreman grill right right so (laughs) so you can change chicken around just in how you season it Mm. like there's sometimes when i just have like a basic um like one of my favorite seasonings is a trader joe's 21 salute okay seasoning so Mm -hmm. that that's like a that goes on just about everything it's like it's like a fancy version of lawry's yeah without the salt Eric bought that after you mentioned that before, and he went to Trader Joe's and he bought that seasoning. Yeah, and it, it, and you can put it on any any and everything. Yeah, in any, I mean, fruit, vegetables. Mm-hmm. I'm not fruit. <laughs> well, actually, maybe hmm, hmm. <laughs> there's some fruit that you was not thinking. Right. So that's one of my go-to seasonings. So I might put that on chicken one day, and another time I might use. Um, there's another seasoning that I got from, like, in my travels, that's one of the things I do. I try to find some type of seasonings there as well. So I got a seasoning that I got from Israel that's mm. a real interesting flavor. So huh. so your go-tos, things that you can change up and make them a little bit different. Like, for me, that just happens to be chicken. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, things that are quick and easy to make. Like, I can, know I can, whip, I can whip together a pot of chili very quickly. Okay. Like, today, since I haven't... Uh, confessed I have not decided what I'm making (laughs) for my meal planning for this week so I know that there's probably going to be some quick things in there for Mm -hmm. today just because of that's my mood so let me ask you how do you feel about the meal kit craze because the other day Eric uh, bought a meal kit because they were doing some segment for um, his show the show Mm -hmm. that he works on and he brought one home and he actually made one yesterday and it was some kind of Indian inspired seasoning, which was just okay. It was kind of bland, but the meal kit served two people and it cost $15. So what are your thoughts about meal kits? Do you have a thought about it? What do you think? Um, Meal kits, that is, I would say, if it works for you. Like, there's no rules about it. Like, if there are some people that absolutely hate going to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And the thing that the meal kits turned, um, puts out, takes out is that they have to go somewhere to get it. Everything's delivered to you. The seasonings are included and everything like that. Um, And after you use them for a while, I have a friend who uses them. 
um, after you use them for a while, you kind of figure out like how much something's going to serve and things like that. So there are ways to tweak it. Or even like if it was kind of bland, you know, if you order that again, now you got to add a little salt right. or whatever it is. Girl, that he added seasoning like too and it was still kind of bland. <laughs> So I don't know how you get over that. I mean, maybe add just a little bit more, yeah. a little bit more than you think you need, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I would say I'm not against them in the sense of if you find one that works well for you, that has food mm-hmm. that you like and everything like that, that it makes it more convenient, um, then by all means, you know, do whatever. Because most times when we, when we come into, you know, meal planning, we're trying to solve an issue of either not having time or not knowing what to make or a dietary issue or, you know, I'm not a good cook. But also the one thing that you have to keep in mind with most of these meal planning kits is you still do have to cook. So you're right. still going to have to, it's going to cut out the planning and the grocery shopping portion. So you're still going to have to cook it. So basically, if you don't mind spending a little bit more money to have all the ingredients and things like that, then that's a good option if you don't have as much time to meal prep and plan okay now now question for that what that meal that you had it was you say it was about 15 bucks for two people but it was just one meal right yeah it was just one meal so that's pretty good i mean i think that on average when i am cooking when i'm doing meal planning for the week um and actually okay one thing i did leave out is that i don't cook just for myself so, okay mm-hmm. so i have a friend who does not like to cook Gotcha. So, <laughs> so we've worked out a deal where I will cook enough for both of us to eat mm. for the whole week and she'll just pay for the groceries. Ooh, that's a, that sounds like a good deal. <laughs> yeah. So if, if you like to cook, you know, there, there's some things that you can work out with it. Right. So basically I've eliminated my grocery, um, budget, like I've, my grocery expense. So that's one thing that I don't have to pay for. So for the two of us to eat for the week on average, I say I probably spend about 50 bucks. Wow. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, no, not bad at all. Not bad <laughs> at all. And some of that, I have to admit, some of that's because, you know, I got like a big bag of rice in the, <laughs> you know, so there's some things that I don't always have to buy over right. and over again. But on average, I would say I spend about $50, $50 okay. for, for two of us to eat all week long. And that's like, and that's not just single meals. That I'll do enough for like breakfast and lunch, basically. And a cake, not breakfast, I'm sorry, lunch and dinner. And occasionally I have a few things that I make for breakfast that I'll throw in, in, in there. So if I'm doing all of the meals like that, then yeah, it might go up to like 60, 70 bucks or something like that. Got it. If I'm doing all of the meals like that. But for the most part, um, it's not very expensive. Um, I've been doing it long enough. I think that, um, like I always tell people if they're going to start doing this, learn your store. Like mm. what stores you go into. Mm-hmm. Like I don't spend a lot of time in the store. I go in with a list. I know where things are. Unless okay. uh, one of the worst things, you know, it's like now I complain about when they change the store around, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but I, I pretty much, if the line's not too long, if I've got a good list, I'm pretty much in and out of any store that I get into in like 20 minutes or less. Any recommendations for parents and other caregivers that might be really busy with life and just not sure they have enough time for meal planning? So advice that I would give to people in that type of situation, they're caregivers and they're really busy and whatnot, is that depending on who you're giving care to, mm-hmm. I'm always one for, especially kids, mm-hmm. I'm always one for finding ways to get them involved mm. in their own care. Okay. Now that may be a little bit difficult or impossible if you're caring, like say for an elderly parent and they can't do anything like that. Right. But in the case of kids... um, it's a good learning opportunity also for them, mm-hmm. you know, because ultimately we want to train them up to be able to care for themselves as adults. Right. So if you're meal planning, um, you know, you can teach them, depending on the age of the kid, how to chop, mm. you know, teach them how to um, be involved in what they want to eat. Mm-hmm. I like, like that. W- like plan it out. It's like, what do we want to eat this week? Uh-huh. Um, teaching them how to cook basic things mm. when they're old enough. Things that are age appropriate, mm-hmm. of course. Um, things are age appropriate. But as a caregiver, as a provider, we should always, I think, search for ways to take some of the pressure off of ourselves whenever there's an opportunity to do so. And also to, especially in the case of children, give them an opportunity to learn something in regards to caring for themselves. Mm-hmm. Because I, you know, I always go back to my mom as an example. 
I want to say as soon as I was tall enough to do something, to reach something, I was learning how to wash it, clean it, Mm. and cook it. Mm. And, you know, it started off with cooking. I want to say I was probably maybe seven or so. Maybe maybe somewhere in that vicinity. Uh I was a tall, skinny kid. So... (laughs) But she taught me how to make breakfast. I learned how to make toast and Mm. eggs and things like that. Mm -hmm. So at a certain point, she didn't have to make breakfast for me. Then after I mastered those things, she taught me how to make other things. It's Mm -hmm. just like little things as we went along um, that she taught me how to make. And um, meal planning, I'm not sure what, I have to look back. (laughs) I'm thinking back. I've never asked her what kind, how she planned our meals when we were, Um, younger I do remember going to the grocery store like every couple of weeks and Mm -hmm. just loading up on everything Mm. Um, and she would just cook everything throughout the time Mm. Um, and I don't know in the top of my head as whether she planned those out but that was a situation well I'm I'm assuming she would have had to have planned it out right but that was a scenario where she didn't necessarily do meal prep Mm -hmm. as in like packing things up beforehand so she cooked daily but she had to know what she was going to cook for nine kids and right. my dad. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like you have no choice, right? Exactly. You have no choice. In that case, you got a plan. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're, if you're a caregiver, um, there are, it's hard. I, I can understand how it might be difficult to find five, a chunk of five hours to cook. Right. But um, if there's an opportunity to have someone help you in that time period, mm-hmm. Or even if it's a matter of the planning portion, Mm. as in I might not be able to cook everything on Sundays like say I do, but if I know that on Tuesday we're going to have meatloaf and I know that on Thursday we're going to have, you know, fish or whatever it is, Mm -hmm. then there are things that you can either do like either the day before or, or just a few hours, you know, you could spend a few hours shopping something or even, um, if you are able to plan some time in your schedule to like say, Hey, I know that I use a lot of onions. I'm going to chop some onions and put them in the freezer, Mm -hmm. um, in like little baggies or something like that. And just spend a few hours with some things that you know that you'll probably use and cook with. But of course that will require some planning. Mm -hmm. So even if you can't do the actual prep portion, like just the planning part of it and figuring out what types of things that you eat and what types of things you're willing to make will be beneficial to save you as opposed to, in the moment of what am I making today? Right. As in, I need to get a meal on the table in the next hour. Mm. And I have no idea. And I don't have anything here for it. Right. Right. So, yeah. That makes sense. And I, I love the idea of getting the kids involved, especially because you see all these shows with kids cooking who yes. are like six years old and seven years I'm old. I'm always so impressed by that. I was like, <laughs> man, how do you know how to make a remoulade sauce? I don't even know how to do that. I know, making a bechamel and all these like, yeah. you know, how to shoe dough. Like, who does that? Where do they do that at? I mean, yeah. when I was a kid. Exactly. I, I was like, I was, a, I was impressed with my toast. <laughs> so, but, right. but, you know, kids can do a whole lot more. Especially now, these kids are so smart now. Right. They really are. They, they have are. so much more information, so much more opportunity and everything like that. And and I think it would be good. And, and, and you know, you can take this from a grain of salt because I'm a person that does not have children. But <laughs> I'm around a lot of kids. I have a yeah. thousand nieces you and nephews. You have a big family. I don't know. You, I, I, I stopped counting at like 32. I've got 30, <laughs> I got at least 32 nieces and nephews. So um, that these kids have so much more information they have so much more opportunity so much more things at their t- at their fingertips than we had when we were their age but oftentimes we still find ourselves trying to do everything for them mm-hmm. and i'm guilty of that you're good <laughs> <laughs> i definitely am. yeah still find ourselves trying to do everything for them um and i witness it in in you know friends with their kids and at the same i witness it in myself you know doing stuff for my nieces and nephews and everything like that mm-hmm. but there are so many things that they're capable of if we would just give them an opportunity to do it. Mm. That was awesome, Carolyn. Do you have any final tips for meal planning and prep for our listeners? Final tips. Um, you know, borrow from Nike. Just do it. Okay. Try it out. Um, start small. Mm. Like, just mm. say that, hey, I'm going to plan. Um, start with a portion of, I'm going to plan a menu for the week. Mm-hmm. Um, or even... Um, I'm going to pick, do start off with like say a mix and match or something mm-hmm. like that. I'm going to make two different kinds of meats. I'm going to make these sides to go with it. 
and see how easy something like that will be. Because that's pretty much how I started. You know, it's like, um, I'm going to eat a bunch of stuff, but I don't want to eat the same thing. So just it's just a matter of um, just start. Try it out. See how it works for you. Or even the delivered meals. The like meal kits. Like, mm-hmm. Meal kits. The meal kits. Yeah. Even to that. Try out one of those. See how that feels. Because um, what I suspect... Um, can happen with a lot of people. Like if I were to try one of those meal kits, I contemplated doing that just to get some some ideas of mm-hmm. like things to make. If you're in a if you're in a situation where you feel like you don't have time to do anything like that, um, then ask yourself, do I have time not to? Mm. Because regardless of whether you're doing a meal kit or whether you're doing it yourself and everything like that, being able to know a bit ahead of time and plan it out buys you if that only buys you 30 minutes that's 30 minutes that you could spend doing something else Mm, i know that's right (laughs) well thank you carolyn so much for joining us on organize me radio and tell everyone how they can get in contact with you okay so you can find me online at uh www.theneatnerd.com um and there's plenty of contact information there email uh telephone the whole nine and you can also find me online on the facebook um, at Beneath Nerd. All right. Thanks, Carolyn. And everyone, join us for an all new episode of Organize Me Radio next week. Thanks for listening. Be sure to follow me on all social media platforms. You can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, and YouTube under Restore Order Professional Organizing, Twitter at Restore Order, and Instagram at Memes underscore Organizes. And remember, get organized, go further. You're listening to Organize Me Radio. I'm Naima Ford-Goldson. Music